Welcome to part three of the top three things that my clients have said have been the most difficult for them during the COVID-19 self-isolation period. Um, number, number one is getting enough sleep and dealing with sleep issues. So let's break down what kinds of things you can do to have a restful sleep um, and what kinds of things you can do during the day that will help you um, in setting up an opportunity to have a good sleep at night. having harder time sleeping um, and I think that can be it can be contributed to by uh, a lot of different things right now I think one is is um, when we get a lot of media information coming at us um, it makes it harder to sleep um, we get a little bit more overwhelmed and that becomes more difficult I think also being stuck inside all day really does like have an impact on our ability to fall asleep uh, mostly because we're not getting the same vitamin D that we need to be getting so or getting the physical exercise that allows us to be able to fall asleep. So those are two things actually you can do to try and help regulate your sleep a little bit is to um, make sure you're getting outside, getting some vitamin D and getting some physical activity of some sort. So um, with that and trying to, to stay asleep and fall asleep, there's also the idea that sometimes um, the routine that we have is contributing to that. So if you wanna to go to bed at a decent time, you have to make sure you're getting up at a decent time. And sometimes it's easier to get up earlier than it is to go to bed earlier. So sometimes we have to lack sleep a little bit for a day um, so that we're tired earlier, so that we can get back on a sleep schedule. That will contribute to it. Beyond that, I think there are a couple other things that we can kind of focus on to allow us to um, make sleep more possible. So there's this concept called sleep hygiene. And the idea is, is that you're supposed to keep you're, there's a bunch of things that you can do to kind of induce sleep, like reducing caffeine, um, not doing exercise really late at night when getting yourself really elevated, not having really heated discussions with people before bed or watching things that really upset you before you go to sleep. There's a few things like that, but also keeping your bed something that's sacred. They say that our, our bed is only supposed to be used for sleep and sex. And so one of the things that happens during a period like this is we end up wanting to use our bed as a place to hang out. And when we do that, we're watching TV in bed, we're reading in bed, we're worrying in bed, we're doing everything else in bed except sleeping. <laughs> and so it doesn't lend itself well for us being able to get a restful sleep. So one of the other things that you can think about then is making yourself um, accountable to not spending time in your bed. Um, so that might mean, you know, spending time during the day um, if you're spending time in your room, for example, trying to stay at a desk or another chair or moving to your living room and using your couch, for example. Um, it depends. I know everybody has different setups. So like whatever you can kind of make happen, the better. Um, so the idea is, is that when you go to sleep at night, if, you're, if you feel like you've been sitting there in bed for a long time and you're thinking about things, um, it's really important that you actually get up out of bed, move to another location, and then engage in a, a quiet activity for a little bit. So that could be like coloring, it could be watching um, a non-excitable kind of TV program. It could be, um, you know, reading something that uh, is not related to what you're maybe worrying about, things like that. Um, and then when you start to feel sleepy again, you move back to your bed and you can lay in bed and say you don't fall asleep again. You do that as many times as you need to throughout the night. Get up, move to a space, you feel sleepy go back to your bed um, so that's one idea we can also pair that idea with the idea of having a, a sleep routine so one of the things I'll often talk to clients about is doing something we like to call worry time which is a little bit of time earlier in the evening maybe a couple of hours before your actual scheduled bedtime to sit down and write out free-flowing thoughts about what's going on and so what I tell clients to do is set a timer for 10 minutes um, and when and then you start writing everything down on a piece of paper that maybe is freaking you out right now And when the timer goes off you stop This is upsetting for some people because what they notice is that everything is staring at them in black and white that freaks them out So if that feels uncomfortable for you You want to rip that piece of paper up afterwards and throw it away The purpose of this activity is to get the thoughts that are bothering you maybe out of your head and out on, out on paper so that they're no longer inside you anymore um, <clears throat> for some, when they do this activity, they see all of those things and realize like, oh, maybe they're not as scary as I thought they were. 
maybe there's something I can actually put into a plan of action. And it helps us to just kind of get that out of ourselves so we can calm down and go to sleep. Now, the caution that I make with this is that after you do this activity, you have to make sure you do something that is in, of a different emotion. So if you're worrying about something, you want to go and do something that's fun. So, you know, go watch a TV program that's going to make you laugh, for example. Um, you know, go engage in something, maybe listen to music that is happy. You know, you want to shift kind of your mood around how you feel about that particular content that you've been writing about. So after you do that, you would maybe for like another half an hour, 20 minutes, something like that, engage in that other activity. And then after that, go into your routine around getting ready for bed. Maybe it's a bath, maybe it's a shower, maybe you brush your teeth and put your pajamas on. Maybe you sit and have a cup of tea. The idea is to go from higher activity earlier in the evening down to lower activity before you go to bed. So engage in a quiet activity of some sort, maybe coloring again, and then eventually get yourself into bed. Now this allows us an opportunity to get these things out of our heads, but also bring down um, and bring in calm before we go to sleep. So there, I think there's been like a number of things here that, that people can try. And so I would, like I would just try a couple different things and see if you can come up with a routine that works for you. It might take a little bit of troubleshooting, but you should be able to kind of work through some of this stuff. If you're having a difficult time dealing with the thoughts that are coming up with some of this stuff, maybe you're having nightmares or things like that, it might be time to go and reach out and talk to a therapist. I hope that this content was helpful for you. Um, I would love to hear feedback in the comments below. Um, you can also reach out to me at my website, which is www.sarahghorsford.com, or you can email me at video at um, Thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to hearing from you.